video is starting. Ooh. All right, now it's a thing. Now it's happening. Now it's going off. <clears throat> what is up, everyone out there in the interworld? This is Matt Welch, the Vagabond Chef, bringing to you Friday night on a Sunday, the uh, industry, whatever in the heck we feel like making it podcast. Today, I have a very special and hairy guest, Daniel Finsley of Finsley Creative. Um, he is a driving force between behind a lot of the awesome change that is happening in Wheeling right now. And uh, join me to rap about whatever the heck it is we feel like talking about for the next hour or so. I've got Jessica Dan saying, yo, 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 Leslie Tedesco. Hey, dudes, what's up, everyone? Thank you for joining us. Um, so, Daniel, welcome to this podcast. Hi. <laughs> Perfect. Now it. All right, we're out. It's Sunday fun day, baby. Let's, let's do this. Oh, uh, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about you, man. Oh, Amanda said uh Aye. I think she said Aye. Um, let's talk a little bit about you, buddy. Let's uh let's talk a little bit about your background, what it is that you do around here. Um, very talented graphic artist that has come into uh your own with photography. Like if you want to lay that out for us a little bit. All right. Um, talking about yourself is the opposite of fun. Okay. Uh, I'm going to fake a seizure so I don't have to do this. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my background. Uh, so it's pretty long, man. Like it all started with just being completely obsessed with like art and illustration as a kid and growing from that um, and finding like a solution in terms of a profession, like while you're in high school, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And, you know, visiting colleges and schools and stuff like that uh ended up getting talked to about graphic design now this is back in like 1999 yeah yeah where and did you I, go to school for graphic design i went to pittsburgh technical college back then it was just pti yeah pittsburgh yeah technical well, in downtown pittsburgh um yeah that was a big culture shock but they were <laughs> like yeah graphic design is the wave of the future Ooh, and i was like word i was like so i could like use my art for this they were like yeah I believed them. I was like, of course. I right, right. Yeah. Why not? Why Dude, not? I, I don't know if we've already talked about this, but I went to PTI too. Yeah. We I were... was in the same boat. I didn't know what the heck to do. Right. And they showed up and they're like, yeah, check it out. This is great. And I was like, well, you're certainly making it easy. Um, it absolutely was, man. Cause I also, um, it was like West Liberty AIP or, uh, PTI. I ended up going with PTI just because like they sweetened the deal. Um, but, but you as knew I... you were going to get into graphic design. When I was accepted and when I went, yeah, they were like, yeah, graphic design, graphic design, it's art, it's this, it's that. And I was like, okay. And then you start school and it's like, uh, you know, your, your first classes are a lot of illustration stuff, um, color theory, uh, a lot of fundamental things. And it was like fun. And then it overflows into the technical side of things like Adobe mm. Illustrator, well, just the Adobe series back then. Um, advertising advertising processes production and then it's like real graphic design it's like i don't like this at all <laughs> don't like this at all like this isn't for me like right off right off the bat i was like this is the opposite of art right i was like this is this is just i'm not having a good time <clears throat> and it got to the point where i was even like fighting it uh mm -hmm. for all of my like billboard mock-ups product mock-ups things of that nature i was like hand illustrating them with uh marker paper like prismacolor marker and just hyper realism kind of like billboards just hand illustrated and they were like yeah these are great but that's a little obsessive mm -hmm. um so i just i kept going man and at first i'm not gonna i like i just i didn't really get it uh in terms of matching the two together like right being obsessed with illustration painting and art and then matching that with graphic design itself and then school was done. I was just not satisfied with it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, I hung around for a little bit. I went back into sales and then I ended up quitting art for like almost a year because of it, uh, just because it hurt my feelings so much and I just didn't understand. And then I can't even like really explain it, man. Um, long story short, I was at the Green Tree Mall. Mm -hmm. Like that was a thing. Uh, I went to a comic store and I saw Humberto Ramos uh, Venom comic. Mm. Like, Holy shit. I was like, that's gorgeous. And 
something sparked in me like that's i still have the venom painting hanging on my hanging on my wall as we speak uh that was that segue like back into art and that obsession and then i ended up going back to school because something it was like seeing the matrix code right like right. fall in front of you for the first time i was like holy hell uh and i went back to school and absolutely just beat the shit out of it mm -hmm. just because it just clicked um now where did you go back to school at same place okay out of, out of spite i was like uh like, you have all yeah you have all these classes that i haven't done i want all of them i want <laughs> all of your multimedia website stuff uh -huh. further like any kind of graphic design thing, like anything that you have, I want it. I don't care if you take me to prison over student loans. I'm going to learn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn everything you have. And it was really fun, man. Uh, it that's, was like, go ahead. That's really wild, dude, because we, we actually went through a very similar kind of arc. Um, now, I had no idea I wanted to get into art at all yeah. uh, coming out of high school, but I didn't know what the heck to do. I felt a lot of pressure to to go to to like college of some sort and PTI showed up and they're talking about art, which I loved and really enjoyed, uh, whether or yeah. not I was very good at it um, is debatable, but they made it super easy and they took us yeah. to Pittsburgh and showed us around and was like, this is cool. I like Pittsburgh. I like the idea of, you know, checking out a different city, uh, went to school there, got a degree and I was like, now what? And, and that's, uh, kept, uh, kept living that's in Pittsburgh exactly for another couple of years and just didn't really feel like I'd gotten what I needed and didn't really have any direction. So that's when I decided to come back to this area and I went back to school at West Liberty. And, and that's good. Absolutely. Something similar, man, because like when I was done, I felt all accomplished and stuff like that. And like, I had this ridiculous drive yeah, uh, and this weird like chip on my shoulder. And, you know, I was done and, you know, a lot of great people like helped me through school. Like I had mentors like Aaron Ingold uh, and his mom, Patty, she, she was like the, art director at 10 united which is like a big i don't know if it's even still around but it was a big agency <clears throat> in pittsburgh and aaron worked there as well uh the viking who, and it was a i mean it was a lot of help but when it was all said and done it was just kind of like lying dormant like just treading water and i ended up going back in to sales after that like kind of mm. exactly what you said like what now uh so what i did is just i kept kind of like learning on my own just experimenting with things and um through word of mouth like people would find out like okay you know i i have this graphic design or like multimedia background they would come to me for uh like logo designs or like just a ton of paintings and illustrations mm -hmm. and stuff like that and inadvertently i ended up building like a small portfolio mm -hmm. so it was a few years um and then I found out through uh, a friend of mine, Kyle McConaughey, that there was an in-house like lead graphic designer uh, for highschoolsports.net and schedule star in downtown Wheeling. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, man, uh, I'm in there. You know, I'll put in a good word and stuff. I was like, you know what, dude, I have nothing to lose. I mean, I was shook because like this was a corporate gig. Like right. um, it was owned by Gannett, which is like Gannett, I think like it owns Pepsi or like USA Today or, or something like that uh, or both. I don't know maybe they own the earth. I don't know anymore. <laughs> but, <clears throat> and I did. Uh, and then I get a reply and a call back. I went in for an interview and bang. Next thing you know, I'm working with like big brand people like David McPherson. David McPherson is like this brand mastermind that uh, it worked with brands such as like Reebok, Gatorade, Porsche. I'm like, holy shit. And then working with giant agencies in like uh, Chicago called Billups. Um, it's just interacting with these people all day um i became a sponge mm -hmm. i was like uh i'm here to learn right but right, every right. possible thing that you have to throw my way because like even though i was shit uh it was before dylan was born i was like 27 when i got my first like actual corporate gig what? um so i kind of like i kind of started late uh and i was just I took that humble approach. I was like, if you want to teach me anything or talk about anything or yeah. show me any, anything you want to say it, I'm here right. for it. And yeah. And I, that's, I mean, you are a super, super humble guy, but at the same time, you mentioned something a little bit ago that I really love about you. And you have, you have taken this, like, I have a chip on my shoulder as this motivation to just absolutely crush it. And like, yeah. you continue to go above <laughs> and beyond all day every day and it's just awesome like 
it makes me think of that old tool song like hatred keeps me alive you know and like yeah it's generally seen as a more negative emotion but i feel like the chip on your shoulder does awesome things for you and the way you you get at it your grind your determination right. and i agree and maybe there's a better term to use but like i use like s- spite a lot like self-spite mm-hmm. uh, it's the reason why i started like working on my body after i got covid or like it's the reason why i do this or that but but it is at the end of the day because what it boils down to is if anybody's holding me back it's myself man mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. i just i don't know i refuse to do that and like i just want a good life i just want to work with people i want to work yeah. with businesses that i love and have admired for like years and then they reach out to me i'm all like ooh, like swooning like when Lara from Ellen Jacks like reached out to me she was like I need photos for uh this publication I was like Psh, word are you kidding me right now <laughs> yeah I'm in man <clears throat> um but it's it's little things like that yeah and I will never not be psyched about it like right, absolutely right. just dancing in my kitchen like an asshole child all pumped like it's Christmas Eve like in your face where Santa Claus like I'm juiced <laughs> you know my, I mean? my mom's joining us hi mom Hi, Thank Sharon. you for joining us. Uh, my mom's awesome. She watches uh, every week. So I appreciate that. So let's fast forward a little bit through the corporate life. And like, so as, as scary and intimidating as that was for you to jump into that and kind of to take that on and those those restrictions and that structure, which I think uh, Bro, I, I was scared to say, yeah, yeah, it's not really your bag. It's <laughs> no, to... But it was cool. I mean, it absolutely was. But go ahead. I'm so sorry. yeah, no, no, no. But w- w- at what point were you like, okay, I have enough. I have enough contacts. I have enough skill. Uh, I have enough, uh, the chip on my shoulder has become a block. Like I'm ready to really push it and I'm going to jump off into the abyss and start doing my own thing. Because that could not have been an easy step to make. No. So I've tried that several times and it wasn't until a, I want to say like three months ago that I was actually ready. Um, so I was kind of forced into some situations like when uh, high school sports got bought out and they were, um, and they were like, you know, you guys are safe. Everything's fine. I was like, yeah. And then they were like, Suck. so they downsized and they got rid of me and like the, the, some of like the web department and just a few other really important people. Cause you know, that's like what corporations do. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, and then I was kind of thrown to the wolves and believe it or not, I went back into sales. Also believe it or not, I'm really good at sales i just want to throw that out there like it's it's a blessing like could you imagine me like running an entire sales floor like motivating like hundreds of people and also being slightly maniacal um I, the maniacal part i can imagine really yeah, easily but, <laughs> regardless <clears throat> um i ended up yeah going back into sales going back into freelance and then i found a gig at a direct mail company and i met uh my previous business partner phil a league and we sort of bridge group creative. And that was like when I realized like, holy shit, we really just can do whatever we want, however we want. And immediately like hit the ground running, like landing uh, just a lot of like random clients and here and there. Uh, gee, I don't know if you remember like Jeans Bourbon Street Barbecue. Uh, there's a lot under mm-hmm. that roof of like the client base that we started with. And we're crushing it, man. And mm-hmm. that was all... Like it was all always a side hustle, you know what I mean? Because like I always right. had a main gig and then right. like nineteen other gigs. People were right. like, "When do you sleep?" I'm like, "I don't." What's that? Yeah. yeah. Um, my my sister and her family are also watching. So hey, hey Meg, hey guys, how are you guys doing? Uh, and then my my brother from another mother, Jeremy Wood, jumped in and he said, uh, "Jeremy Wood he was curious what your what makes you so connected. What's your big investment in wheeling?" So. When I came back, um, there, this is kind of like unknown, like not, it's not like publicly known. After my divorce, I kind of like, I just, I wanted to just disappear. Um, and yeah. I left, like, I didn't even like really tell anybody. I was like, Hey, I'm home. Like I went back to Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like new life, who dis, uh, mm-hmm. Just trying to do my thing, man. And I went in. I went hard. I, I reached out to everybody. I connected with so many people and like so many businesses and individuals. And, uh, you know, I, I got a ton of work, but I didn't mm. get a career. And that's mm. what I wanted. Um, and I ended up coming back to Wheeling for 
a job opportunity as a brand developer for Body Mind Institute. Um, and it was then when I realized like, okay, this is probably where the opportunities are. So I put that like wanting to escape thing to bed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like, I'm just going to stay here. And I inadvertently just, my previous connections with like Bridge Group and like years before that, <clears throat> inadvertently like built that. People were like, oh, you we, where, where did you go? All, things like that, man. Um, we're glad you're back. Or I didn't even realize you left. I was like sick. Uh, I was like, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's like, I get it, man. I'm like, I ain't shit, man. I know that. Um, and I just, I really started to structure my life from that. Uh, and I just made the decision not to leave. And especially like starting to work more and more and more with mm. local like idea people, organizations, small businesses. Uh, I really started to enjoy it. I was yeah. like, holy shit. So at the end of the day, like I am helping create these ad- identities and overflow that like into a proper brand. That right. way it's not all DIY. Right. Uh, and watching these businesses and these places like thrive. And I'm not saying it's because of what I did or anything, but I'll be damned if I don't love seeing my work out in the wild. I'm like, sure. hey, oh. Well, and it's you're nice. like, you're, you're like good. the it's rhythm cool. section. You're like, you know, you're like the, yeah. the you, you're, you're laying down like the serious yeah. tracks that uh, these other businesses and brands, including myself, get to like really shine. And, uh, and, you know, we do what we do well. And then you make us look really, really good. Like whether that's through your logo design or through your photography or through your web design or whatever else it is that you're doing. And that's just it, man. <clears throat> and like I said, like I catch a high from that. Like there's uh, people will reach out to me a lot. And I just, I love meeting with people. Like I, I have a lot of sit down meetings at like table three or four and I just absorb people's ideas mm. and their direction. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you came to the right place and I put everything on the table um, in terms of what I do from a start to finish, whether that be like from logo design all the way up to like final branding with like website and photography and video and mm. everything like that. And they're like, oh, word, I didn't know you do all that. I was like, yeah, man, you don't have to talk to like nine different people. Right. Just, just say hi. We got uh, we got Terry Lee McCabe joining us and Marty Medivic. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for jumping on here and checking this out. Uh, so here's a here's a question for you, Daniel. And I, I, I wonder if you'll see this uh, the same way as I do. Um, I've noticed structuring the Vagabond the way we do, doing the menu the way we do, um, the way we interact with customers, all of that stuff. Like we really hone in on who our customers are. Mm hmm. And some people just aren't. Some people are chain people or fast food people Ooh, or yeah. whatever. And that and that's okay. Um, Is it though? But, uh, I mean, in a grander scheme of things, no, it sucks. <laughs> but for like a day-to-day operation, like you need to go where you're the most happy. And then my job <clears> is <throat> to convince you you'd be happier on this side of the fence, right? Yeah. So with you, do you find that working with local places – and bringing on clients the way you do are they more open to your ideas are they less likely to ask for lens flares and kittens or um is it kind of just still that that same old struggle of trying to get people to understand what's really good so i've found that with my like longevity in like with what i do i find that less and less like there are still I don't, I don't want to say like the struggle is bad or still there, but like there, there are hiccups and things like that. Like, uh, but it's, it's few and far between. And what I found out is, you know, if you are genuine and you put your ideas out there and you kind of direct them into toward what you feel would work, uh, it's a lot easier because that's kind of a trust thing. If you, I don't want to say if you sound like you know what you're doing, Mm -hmm. they believe you, but like, I like to at least think that I do kind of know what I'm doing. Yeah, well, you you got to instill confidence in them, right? Right. This is your, you live, breathe, eat, sleep, day in, day out. This is your life. You know, like, maybe you have a good idea of what you're talking about. Right. Right. And like I said, I would like to think that. Um, But I mean, everybody regardless of how good they are like they're still always like imposter syndrome and stuff oh, yeah. like that oh yeah but 
that said, I used to I used to deal with that a lot. I mean, just a lot more. And maybe it was I because like I was so young in the industry. Uh, but I've always like tried to fight that like tooth and nail, mm-hmm. just because that's kind of who I am and mm-hmm. you know, authority reasons. But I've the best part about it is, you know, I, I talked to Nathan when we started folklore. I was like, it's not about me. And my favorite part about building something is the process itself. Mm-hmm. Because it when everything is said and done, like <clears throat> you're not just like my client, man. But this is essentially like a marriage and has to go right. both ways. Right. Uh, so I am absolutely here for any kind of open-ended ideas or like, hey, what about this? What about this? And mm-hmm. if it's like, if it's ridiculous or like if it's obtuse, like I want to put my dog in a catalog, I will bitch and moan about it. But like I said, it's not about me. Uh, right. And right. Well, and is... I think I think a lot of times when it comes down to that sort of stuff, uh, and this is another thing where, you know, f- feel free to disagree if, if you're not experiencing the same thing, <clears> but. I think what a lot of times it comes down to communication and oh God, uh, especially for, us. for us, it's a lot of setting expectations. So, you know, if we're overwhelmed at the restaurant and someone comes into the, into the front door and we say, look, you know, we're, we're at capacity right now. Uh, we're turning food as fast as we can. We're, we're yeah. making sure people have an excellent experience. We need you to hold off for a little bit yeah. and you can either take a walk, come back. We can take your number. We can give you a call. Um, You can sit at the bar and have a drink, but we're not going to be able to get you any food for like 20, 30 minutes. So much better than getting them a seat and making them wait longer, you know, like just managing those expectations. And then on top of that, um, communicating, and this is what my servers are so great at, communicating to the folks like, this is why we do what we do. This is what this is. This is the madness behind this dish is this so that they get an idea of what they're what to expect does that make sense do you find that no it absolutely makes sense and i i mean i preach this in every every aspect of my life like communication is awesome it is i would assume that's how like drugs feel when you communicate with somebody and it's reciprocated right and like it's (laughs) that level of like comprehension and giving back all of that it's it just it feels good and you can just sit in your corner and be silent and that's not going to do anything it's just not right. what are you going to do right. you're going to you're going to piss and moan in silence you're going to get bitter you're going to get jaded no talk to your people man that's yeah, the beauty yeah. of it like i said it's a marriage this shit has to work it's a relationship like well, people, you came to me you proposed to me okay like when you come to me and ask me to work for you so i have to prove myself to make sure this marriage works right. and it like i said it goes both ways um And back to what I was saying in terms of like any kind of like ideas or direction, uh, no idea is a bad idea. If Mm -hmm. I think it's not going to work, like I will say, well, I don't think this is going to work, but there's going to be reasonings behind that. Mm -hmm. Well, this is not going to work because, and then follow up like, well, let's try this instead. But then it goes back to that. Like, right. Okay. Well, I, I like that. But how about we, you know, exactly what I said previous, like, let's try to meet in the middle. And that's just, that's a common thing, man. You're never going to escape that. And much like the restaurant industry. Yeah, for sure. It's just funny like, how you, you, how you said that. And, and I, at first I interpreted that a different way as no idea, like having no idea what you wanted is a bad idea, which is not what you meant. But I think that's so, so fucking true. If you have no idea what you want, like that's the worst idea ever, you know? Uh, and you really got yeah. Ooh. You got to guide people, um, and I think uh, I think that's, that's really the people hard. that like I know it when I I'll know it. I know when, when I, I see, see it. it. Right. I right. would rather be on fire, but, right? Because like there's chances that yeah, I could like put my heart and soul into something. I could be so proud, just out here like levitating off right. of pride alone. And they're like, yeah, no. That's I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I'll just I'll just drive into the river. That's cool that's cool <laughs> and Look, like it, it river has guard gotta eat too man yeah man um and that's that's why I like that whole communication process like i love to ask questions like yeah. i want to get to know it like it like i said it, it you date and then there's the yeah. proposal the, right. then there's the marriage like there are sections to it and that's every part of the project 
uh jasmine ridenauer has joined us thank you for coming on jasmine thanks for watching and thanks for all all the folks watching live right now we really appreciate it um yeah i think you're absolutely right man and i think i think people are so afraid of of really putting themselves out there and really communicating like you sure. know i i think part of it is i don't want you to think i'm stupid because this is my idea i don't want you to like you know what if you don't like it you know like I think talking to you, it could be like, what if you think my idea is stupid for this logo? But also at the same time, I know what I want, you know, mm -hmm. so it's on me to communicate it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know for my end, like it takes, uh, it takes some serious balls to put some of these menu items on or, or do some of these dinners um, and like, okay, well, I have to believe in myself and, and what I'm doing um, because I don't know how it's going to be received, but I do know that if all I do is worry about how it's received, I'm never going to do anything. It's worth a damn. Yeah, chicken tenders and french fries, baby boy. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Everyone loves them. Yeah. I mean. You know what I heard everyone loves is uh, uh, SpaghettiOs. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, when you brought that plate out, let's be honest with each other. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, I knew I would be like, I didn't want to even talk shit. I'd be like, I, I knew in my mind i was like i would crush the shit out of that people Dude. think like because i post all this crazy food people think that i just actually e eat like that right like you, are you high like of course i'm making stupid box noodles and like jar sauce or like chicken nuggets and like fries for my kid and shit i mean this is how it is it, you know absolutely how it is what, what, what i think is really funny about that whole experience and if you don't know um, Daniel and I worked together to take a photograph of an absolutely ridiculous plate of food as an April Fool's joke. It's something I've been wanting to do for years. So good, dude. Uh, never had the opportunity or the time to really pull it off. And um, with Daniel in my corner, I was like, look, we got to we got to make this happen. Like, this could be really fun. Uh, so that is on the Vagabond Chef Facebook page. If you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to scroll through the news feed and find that. Um, but what I find really funny about that, that whole thing, and it's gotten a great response and, um, everyone thinks it's funny, but two things are great. Actually. One, I have not stopped thinking about how I could have plated it better. Are you kidding me? Dude, that, <laughs> that presentation was gold, man. I think I put too much on the plate. I think I could have plated it a lot better. Uh, I, <laughs> I work no, with the pro start program. That, and one yeah. of the things we tell the kids all the time is don't try to put 50 pounds of stuff in a in a 25 pound bag and i feel like well, I that's the beauty of it being also like april fools and like people want to see a full plate of right. absolute trash right, you know what i mean right, right. like when you well, and it wasn't like it was ugly you brought it out i was like holy shit this is pretty as fuck <laughs> like well, and, and he, it's fucking corn that's, dogs man <laughs> that's the that's the other thing that's really hilarious about it is everyone from staff uh other staff uh to people that have seen it on the internet everyone has had the reaction of like uh because it does actually look good at first glance yeah. and like i can't remember what somebody said they're like well what about this like oh somebody said something about the rosemary tree like what about that tree on there and i'm like <laughs> yeah what favorite. about the grapes and the spaghettios and yeah. the corn dog like <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous but but everyone's first reaction is kind of like oh i don't want to like say that that's ridiculous or maybe they didn't realize it was ridiculous i'm not sure but I think that's the best April Fool's joke is when you think it's it could be real. Taken yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. Like Chris Pratt did one that was talking about how he was going to be the voice of Mickey Mouse in a new Mickey Mouse movie. And like, oh, I, I was like, holy shit, that, does he do voices? Like, that's really weird. Then like, oh, yeah. no, it's an April Fool's joke. Right. But that's you. It, it was perfectly executed. I remember like when you approached me. I was like, uh, yes, we got to use the hot dogs, dude. Just like that weird photo I set up where people took that serious. Like, yeah. I, it's, it's a glass of spaghettios with like hot dogs just shoved inside. Yeah. I was like, yeah. We were like, yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, it just, it works because at the same time, like so many people thought I was serious. Yeah. Right. I'm just out of here drinking like pint glasses of spaghettios. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, like I tasted it. Spaghettios right. are no longer good. I mean, at least for me, like that they're not as good as they are in our memories. It was that's for so sure. weird, man. I was like, ah, that tastes like aspirating in your sleep. See, I think we should do like a SpaghettiOs bl Bloody Mary. I think that could be a hit. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm interested. I don't know if that's a joke, <laughs> but like I'm in. I just I was talking about Bloody Marys yesterday with Jeremy from Carlitos. And I was like, you understand what I would do for just a good Bloody Mary just like all the time, just like really bad things just really <laughs> bad things man 
So uh, is there a local restaurant that you don't work with at this point? Like, do we need to shout <clears> anybody <throat> out or should I drop a business card off somewhere and be like, get your shit together? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot, unfortunately. Um, Cause you, you've got quite a resume of, of local people who are working their butts off, trying hard and you're out there making them look good, like all the damn time. And I think that it's, it might be a little bit of intimidation in terms of like monetary movement and like what I charge. Um, I, I, it's not shit. I, I tell you that. I mean, it, I have like a little bit of cushion or whatever, but don't be afraid to like reach out. Just ask questions. Exactly what we talked about before, like communication, just ask right. like, Hey, let's talk about this. I'm like, yeah. So there are a few restaurants that I romanticize uh, all the time. When I was out for the CVB um, last week and this weekend, like I stopped in at Coleman's. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was packed to the max and i'm just mm -hmm. out here like taking all kinds of photos and i'm like son of a bitch uh and i ended up like finally following following like their facebook page and i was mm -hmm. like Oof. <laughs> yikes because i yeah. love coleman's man like right, that's sure. my go-to place for mm -hmm. for like for seafood or like random shit like alligator or like frogs frog legs i love those things right and that's the only place you can really get that um <clears throat> it'd be like yeah th but I don't want to just say a bunch of. I know you don't want to call a bunch of people. Names, uh, that's like, not, that's Coleman's hire me, dude. That's Stop. not what we're about. Yeah, yeah. but no, I mean for real. You, uh, my, the point of me saying that was just to, to throw out that like you are, you're really working with the uh, creme de la creme, and uh, I appreciate the work that you do and and how like you are making Wheeling look so good. Like that's and what's great. That's I mean that's, it's just been my. It was completely accidental, but like that's just, I don't know, that's just been my mantra. Like for, since Bridge Group Creative, and then like when I started Wheeling Threads and showing that kind of like nostalgic thing and getting, trying to create like a little bit of like unity amongst people. Like when I did the, you know, the, the Moon Dog design for mm -hmm. uh, like the fundraiser and stuff, like that's when it really, really clicked. Like all these people came together. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ride this train forever man just mm -hmm. keep pushing and pushing and pushing dude it's great um, we need that we need we need champions we need people with with real talent who are showing the all the good things that can come out of this area and like i think we just have such a, a fantastic um history and culture and like we have so many good things in our corner that we can celebrate and and promote out there and and bring people in from from outside of the area and i think yeah. it raises the morale of the people in the area but then at the same time, we're constantly fighting ourselves. And like, it's like our neighbors are the very people trying to tear us down. And, and that's really hard sometimes. I, I know it's uh, hard for you. And I know it's yeah. hard for me. We've talked about this a lot, man. And that is like an internal fight. And I, I say this, I mean, just as often as I, I probably take a breath, man, it's it's bittersweet. Because mm -hmm. like you, you champion these places like you put them on a pedestal and it's like you push and push and push and you work and people are like from the stands are like cheering for you but when it comes time to actually support the team they're like oh no we're good right i'm i'm super good on that right and like i get it like drive throughs are convenient you have kids sure uh sure. like it's it's been a long day i fucking understand are you out here not thinking that like i order dominoes for my for dylan it like at least like once a week bet your right. ass yes right. am right. i mad about it fucking right yes <laughs> um you but know at the same time like people they they live like that man well i think it's i i remember years and years ago uh probably like two years into moving back here and starting the vagabond kitchen and everything i remember saying i'm making a post on, on social media and said something like um if you're buying your vegetables from kroger's and not grow high valley or jebbia's market like you're doing it wrong mm -hmm. and i stand by that but at the same time i get it like i get being super busy i get having a family i get convenience like we are we are very convenient driven and and that makes sense and i understand that yeah it absolutely does what what makes a huge difference um is putting in that effort when you do have the time or to structure the time into your life to utilize local product, um, you know, even if it's, you know, on a weekend or, you know, just taking that extra step because it does help out your community so 
fucking much like I, that money stays in the community that the morale that it builds like uh, those of us who are small local businesses are busting our humps every day to make this work and like and we need everybody you mentioned kroger <clears throat> so i i shop at kroger i absolutely do that said like i shop at all these other places uh i would rather lose a limb than have to go to kroger when it's as packed as it was today <laughs> And all yeah. I got were, were like pre-made uh, flatbread pizza doughs, some veggies, sauce, and like some random shit. But bro, it was like the Wild West out there. I was ready to fight. I would much rather go to like Public Market or like Jebbia's for my produce. and Or like, I mean, <laughs> anywhere other than Kroger. See, I would, there's a, hmm. It's just a day ruiner, bud. It is. And everybody yeah, on this thread, everybody watching this knows when they leave Kroger at any time of day, aside from maybe at like 6 to 6.30 a.m., uh, yeah, they come home mad. Like, they want to <laughs> kick the door in. If you say no, you're a goddamn liar. Yeah, That's lies. See, my biggest problem with Kroger is usually if I'm there, it's because there's some sort of an emergency at the restaurant. And sure. I walk in with chef brain. And I am yeah. just, I'm just like, I used to call it mall walk. When I go to the mall, like I'm fucking moving. Yeah. And I walk into Kroger with chef brain and mall walk and I'm moving and I'm going to grab this and grab that. But and it doesn't work like out. that. Nobody has grocery store cooth. Everybody's just hanging out all willy nilly. <laughs> There's carts everywhere. There's like nine people like in one aisle, just hanging out. Like it's a family reunion. Like, Hey, how's auntie right. Susan? I'm just like, I'm going to pile right through you. Like right. <laughs> I'm the Bigfoot monster truck, dude. And, and like, like that's like, what goes you know through what? my head, but I just it, sit there, man, patiently. in a different time in a different place. I would absolutely love to reconnect with you and share, you know, our lives in the past 10 years or whatever is going on. And that would be great. Uh, but in this moment here and now I'm going to budge you aside and I am going to keep moving. Uh, but it's just, I got to be careful because a small business owner, you know, like, and I'm super jealous of our friend yeah. Johnny Hot because he can just be a dick to everybody. Yeah. And it's like, Good that's him, just man. Johnny. <laughs> like, oh, it must be nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a dick all the time. Like, I'm oh, okay. jealous, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do that. And and it's, and it's not that I don't want to connect with people. It's not that I don't want to say hi. It's just, I'm busy. I'm in, I'm moving, you know? Yeah. But yeah, by far my least always, favorite thing about Kroger. Yeah, man. And it doesn't matter when i go there like I, I always see somebody and i'm elated to see him like and it's always somebody i haven't seen in a while and i do want to catch up man like i really do and i, I want to do like the ass out hug you know what i mean yeah the, yeah you know right. what i mean um right. all but the... it is it is on the move and like i don't, I don't want to be a dick at all because like i don't i just <laughs> this, this is not for me yeah but yeah you are absolutely right dude and it's funny <laughs> Like you said, chef brain, I feel like, I mean, I'm clearly not a chef, but I have oh, okay. when right, I go fine. in there. All right, cool. Like, All right, cool. We're going to talk about this then. All right. You brought it no. up. Yep. Yep. No, I'm having a. You put, you put two of the three nails in the cross on your, on your own. I, We're going to talk about it. Break it up. Real you, <laughs> All right. So maybe not a chef, but damn, do you make some delicious food? And I think the only thing that keeps you from being a chef is being able to do it uh in the middle of a rush at you know 60 times the same exact way but the food die. that you're that you've been pushing out uh and granted you're an amazing <clears throat> photographer so that super helps your food look good but like dude i won't lie i won't front i get jealous sometimes i'm like oh yeah daniel in another fucking delicious dish must be nice i mean he cooked two so it's it's not a big deal yeah so fun fact those are all hello fresh meals is that right no god damn it <laughs> <laughs> No, no, man. I just, I don't know, man. I like to experiment and just fuck off. Yeah, uh, no, that's awesome. I mean, I have taken losses. I mean, big time, like to yeah. the point where it's hurt my, hurt my feelings or the tip of my thumb off. But like, yeah. I don't know. I just, it, it's seriously just years of uh, liking to, liking to cook and experimenting and just like growing from there and learning things from people. Uh, and I don't even know like correct terminology. Like I'll talk to Dave from, uh, Tuckeria 304 and he'll say these terms I'm just like yeah I have no idea what the fuck that means and he's like oh it means this I'm like well I just call it just meat juice bud yeah yeah you know what I mean <laughs> right like, well, that, well that's the like difference that, between uh industry background and uh you know uh, academic background like 
uh when you go to culinary school you have names for all the things yeah for, you know i grew up uh, i worked my way up from the dish pit so i'm like yeah cut it in quadritos that's what we always called it i don't know what it means it's a small dice what <laughs> uh amy that's ramsey all- just chimed in uh saying that looking at your food makes her downstairs tingle so black and right there's that um uh, yeah, and Jasmine it, it says it's gorgeous food. Jeremy uh, says sometimes it's okay to be a dick, and he would know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> like, so, all right, yeah. so all right, so let's talk about this, man. Let's let's talk about this. You are awesome. You do awesome work. You you're 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 super enthusiastic. You're oh, super stop. good guy. So no no no, take it. You take these compliments. Um, you're a great dude. Uh, what? What do you do when people don't realize how really amazing and talented you are? Let's talk about the haters. Like name drop? No. But what do you do? How do you handle it? What what do you think about it? No. It was it was a little different. Uh that from <clears throat> then to now. Uh I don't know if I mean I have well, I think most people have one active hater and Oh, you only have, have one? I mean, well, I don't know. I don't know if I pay attention that much. I don't know if I pay attention that much, man. But there is one that a lot of us commonly share. And that's, uh, well, you know, it rhymes with mill. Right, right. And we, we, you know, we all, we all know that poor fellow. And yeah, uh, you know, I feel bad for him and and the the problems that he obviously has. But I I think it's a bigger, bigger conversation than, than one you know one internet troll you know he is the we he 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 could be to wheeling trolls what moondog was to to the wheeling streets man like that, right, that guy man. just does it so and well it used to like really wreck me mm-hmm. uh i mean bad just because okay like when wheeling threads was like in its doing its thing and stuff like none of that shit was easy and right. <clears throat> there was a big focus on like greens donuts and stuff right. and like i uh i it's it's not hard to like find these people but like uh the owner's grandson reached out to me and we we talked about it and it's it's a back and forth like they own green stone us right and the agreement was okay yeah we'll do this proceeds go to our local easter seals because that's Mm -hmm. that was his grandfather's favorite um charitable organization i was like word and that's exactly like what i did for most of wheeling Fred's profits like it was all donating like moving the money to somewhere else that deserved it and i don't it, know man like, i mean i can tell just from the art on your wall and your background that you are obviously rolling at it and taking advantage of wheeling at every every shot you got i mean i am rich <laughs> but yeah so man rich. i mean there, we're you're always going to have a hater out there or haters out there um you you can't do anything without pissing somebody off and that's just part of it you know like i feel uh, like it's an it's unfortunate um and like i said i don't know maybe i'm just ignorant to it or i just like don't pay mind and i'm i'm sure there are but like i don't know man leave me the fuck alone let me, let me just do my own thing i'm trying right. to afford avocados every day well and that's what you got to do i'm trying I mean, to get that wing money to take my lady friend out <laughs> Well, you know, I think so. I think when when I hear criticism, like not trolls necessarily, but like true criticism, bad reviews for the restaurant, um, I think about what is the source? You know, where is this person coming from? Is it true? And can I learn anything from it? Because it might not be true, but I might still be able to learn something. Yeah. Or or it might be true, and I can't learn anything. Like, yeah, I know we we had a bad night, man. We fucked up. Like it happens. I'm sorry. It absolutely Uh, does. Yeah. That's a humility, though, dude right well that's it, the beauty you, you of gotta it. have that you gotta have yeah. that you're not always perfect Mm-mm. and we're you know i i was grazed in 4-h man i'm trying to make the best better every fucking day I, every plate i go out i'm trying to make better than the last plate every night we're trying to do better than the last night and we, it's not always going to be that way that's that four agreements man you said you hadn't read that yet always do your best I, but your dude, best is always going to change it's literally on my bookshelf i can yeah. i can sense it from here and in the guilt that i have like of course you had to say that make me make <laughs> no, guilt, Sunday night. no guilt you'll yeah. get your time you'll find <laughs> it no worries but i think uh i think it is really it's 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 tough and it's challenging especially doing what you do doing what i do you know you're really putting your heart out there you're putting your soul out there you're doing all the work and and you're just saying i'm, I'm giving this 
you know and then someone's like oh you're a piece of shit like ah ah man that, <laughs> ooh, i mean i am a sensitive ass dude i i am like i will i i don't know okay i you're an artist man artists are sensitive we all are and i mean i would, well, I I mean, would like, like to qualify myself as at least somewhat of an artist yeah you don't think i want to listen to poison well right now and just like have a tear or two come on let's be honest with each other but like i feel like I, i'm doing good for other people absolutely and it, like if somebody slides in like you know exactly what you said like uh, you're a piece of shit that's not fucking criticism man mm-hmm. i mean that's not like anything constructive that's not feedback that's just you right. being a shit that's taster point. like that's, that's all point. you're a poop yep. butt done mm-hmm. um but exactly what you said man like feeding off of that and like really reading into it uh that right there that's a solution man because like complacency is a real thing right oh, i'm doing the right. damn thing oh oh i'm comfortable yeah i'm just going to keep on doing it like this wrong yep yep bullshit dude yeah you cannot ride your own laurels you know and you can't Ooh. you can't just slide into complacency and say yeah. i'm i'm a badass i'm doing great shit like i'm, I'm yeah. okay like no 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 you have to constantly be reevaluating, constantly checking your stuff out and and you know no matter the impetus behind the criticism sometimes they got something you got to listen to. You're like, you know, you know what? You're right. I thought that was an awesome uh, thing. And and I missed the boat. I, I messed up. It absolutely happens. I mean, it absolutely does. There's just, there's no way around it. Like I tell the people that I work with, like, this isn't approved uh, until you are absolutely in love with it. Um, and that holds true because like, it okay there's there's a lot of things with what i just put on the table so Mm -hmm. with what you said with the feedback in the building and everything like that man um you know you may think you are creating something that is absolutely picture perfect you know Mm -hmm. uh and then you get that feedback and you grow from there and like i said like i don't want to finish something until they absolutely love it and that that comes from that feedback and that push and that direction right uh which inadvertently came full circle communication am i right hey well that, that's true but also <laughs> also you can't take one person's idea or one person's evaluation and make that the gospel you know and that's yeah. what that goes back to what i said about you know we're not everyone's place we're not at, we're not for everyone yet like uh and and i don't want to change what we do but i want to convert more people into what we do um but sometimes uh and it's care you got to be careful man because i don't want to pass the buck i don't want to i don't want to ever say oh that's my excuse for being subpar um yeah but sometimes you're just not you're just not being received by the right people not everyone likes anything you know so it's a very tricky balance of being true to what you're doing uh and also continuing to improve what you're doing I absolutely agree with that. And I feel like, um, you know, you and I talk about this a lot. Like I almost feel like my opinion is biased sometimes just because like, I love all of the small businesses and like, I frequent them I like shop and I eat there and it, I just, I'm just amped about it. Mm. Like, Holy shit. A place like this exists where I live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You bet your mm-hmm. ass. Mm-hmm. We were like, no like and that's just it like it wasn't it's not like applebee's that right dude come on (laughs) i mean you have a microwave at the crib make your own fucking applebee's right like it's that simple well and that's that's where the magic can really happen (laughs) you gotta it's it, it takes me back to like my punk rock days you know and like you've got people who really understand what punk rock is you've got your posers and you've got your people who don't get it at all and the only goal is to transfer these people to here and these people to here you just got to shift people over one degree right so so the goal is you know is to keep the the choir you know don't preach to the choir keep them keep the choir singing and add more people to the choir like that's that's what you got to do and also uh i always think about the fact that the american revolution was not it was not a thing for the majority of the people that lived in this country at the time it was an active minority and I think that's really important to remember. So it does not take a majority of the people to make a thing happen. It takes an active minority. 
So we need to energize the people who are worth a shit, who are, who are being on the team, who are making it happen, and we need to make it happen, right? Can we just take a second to acknowledge that bomb of badass <laughs> shit you just said? <laughs> like, are you kidding me right now? That's going to be my first chest tattoo, like my first ever tattoo, just that quote. Just like bang right on my nipples. Like that was good, dude. And I absolutely agree. Woo, that gave me the gooseies. Well, man, I mean, I mean I, you are right. You are absolutely right. We we gotta and and, and that's the thing, like we, we're we're taught that we're we're ineffectual. We're taught we can't make a difference. We're you know, we're taught this is just the way things it, it, the way things are, and, and and it's not, it's not. We can make a difference. Uh it's like our benefit burger at the restaurant. Um it's it's minuscule we don't we don't raise a ton of money but we raise awareness and we raise the idea that i can make a difference as small as it is and and that's what's really powerful what's really important yeah uh, yes. we can come together and make make things happen and i feel, but, I feel like a, a lot of people miss out on that as well like with what that means and what you do because like you don't have to do any of that shit mm-hmm. you don't you're like here's this burger Mm-hmm. Give me the burger money, but you don't. And like, that's an absolute beautiful thing. And I think that that should be like put on a pedestal. I mean, a, a lot of people, they do raise awareness and they do raise money and things like that. But I, th- I think a lot of that is n- the attention that should be paid to it isn't. And that's not you, just you mean with your the place. Yeah. Oh shit, man. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't do and, what I a lot I of do. other places as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, I couldn't. Like, come I, on, man. I can't speak <laughs> like, for other we places, don't have to do this. But I couldn't do what I do if I didn't believe in what I'm attempting to do for downtown Wheeling, for for Wheeling, for the Ohio Valley, for West Virginia. Like, yeah, I'm the kind of guy that needs yeah. a greater cause, a greater vision. Like, you straight up can't pay me enough to just slog through the hours that I do. Like I have to have a reason, you know, and I think you're the same way. Like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, a, a yeah. calling, you know, yeah. like yes. a yes. mission, a quest, even if we can get that uh, esoteric about it, like, you know, like I'm here on this planet to do this thing. And like, I'm not letting anyone stop me from doing it. Spike. It just happens that I live in this capitalist nation where I yeah. have to make money while I do it, but it is I unfortunate. Need- yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, spite, chip on your shoulder, yeah. you know, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, whatever that's, it takes. that's absolutely how it is, man. Like, complacency is just water in your lungs, dude. Right. Well, and sometimes I feel that way. Like, I'm, listen, Wheeling, I'm going to drag you kicking and screaming into the future. Just, I don't care. I don't care if you want it. Yeah. I don't care if you like it. Let's go. Yeah. And that's, I mean, as you clearly know, like, that's the same mentality with me. And right. there's not like, I don't, <clears throat> I don't go like fishing for, for folks or, or anything man like in terms of what i do i just hope that people see it mm. and create an interest in the clients that i work with and for because like that shit's important to me like right. if a new spot opens up i'm like fuck yeah yeah let's pour gasoline on this fire let's see how bright it could possibly get right and if it doesn't burn my eyes then i'm not doing my job correctly right right well, I was talking to Steve Novotny earlier today and he was, uh, he said he was going to watch tonight and he really liked, uh, what we're doing here with the podcast. And, and he said, it was really cool that we were, we were pulling the curtain back on, uh, the food porn, you know, like this is what it takes to get there. Uh, and I really appreciated that feedback. You know, he's done journalism for a very long time. Yeah. I've uh, been a very active member of our community and done a lot of great things. And, um, you know, kind of that, uh, that advice was, was, was a lot much appreciated. You know, and and we do need to show people what's actually going into this in a way that's like not chest beating or like prideful, you know, like, you know, I, I, one thing I know about Appalachia, West Virginia, Wheeling, whatever, is uh, you go around telling people how great you are. Yeah, folks, that's folks are you get turn their nose pants, up baby. real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's why I like always that iron shit mentality. And exactly what you said, like when you started blowing smoke, I was like, "This, oh, this motherfucker." No, nah, but it's like, not yeah, smoke. Like, it's uh, not smoke, man. It's, I know, I know that, but like, it just makes me want to just disappear into the bushes, like Homer. Yeah, Simpson. and that's fine, and and that's cool. Like that humility is important, um, not only for you as a human being, but f- like to, to 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 survive in this area, 
yeah. like that humility is super important but like let no one misunderstand the fact that you are a designer badass you are a photography fucking genius and you picked this shit up in the past couple of years and i don't give a shit if it makes you uncomfortable My you need to hear it hot. you need to hear it you're but really amazing at what you do i it's crazy like how i even picked up like photography man like our photographer with folklore like she, she was she was growing man like she is she was incredible photographer and i was like uh i'm just gonna go back to college and, and learn photography because we like we need a photographer and much of like what i do it's all accidental and like inadvertent uh, i was absolutely obsessed and then i realized like holy shit i study imagery all day whether that be for like social media advertising mm -hmm. layout websites so like in my mind it's just already there mm -hmm. i and I, I know that may sound arrogant or whatever but no um dude the, learning <clears throat> the process of photography you're you're that shit was hard dude listen that i love you i love mind. you and you are you are a super talented guy and you work your ass off and and like everyone should know this like <laughs> sorry i got distracted thomas gilson joined us he called my miller light uh or miller oh, highlight Jesus. as he should the champagne of beers it is um but that's my grandma's don't, well, my great grandma's favorite don't beer, yeah. derail me thomas daniel you're you're an amazing guy you're you're a super talented guy um and like i appreciate that you don't want to go around talking about how amazing and powerful and wonderful you are but yeah no, let I me be the one be to say fire. it like holy shit dude thank you for believing in what i do thank you for believing in what wheeling does you know like you're putting your ass behind shit that needs support and you're making it look so much better. I mean, the stuff we do with state tourism, the stuff you've done with Ellen Jacks for that magazine, like, man, it's not just Facebook. It's not just, you know, like it, you were so far beyond, a, a, you know, a, a serving a client, you know, like you were really creating something here. And uh, I think a lot about, I don't remember his name, but the guy who took all the photographs of like, Fugazi and Black Flag back in the day and like now they've got these black and white ta coffee table books yeah you know, like that's you you're you're that guy for our scene you're pushing it no but no, like I'm not oh I mean how couldn't I be this is uh this is it like this is this is my home and I i like I've known what you've done and what you do for shit man we're going on like seven years now right what that vagabond's been open yeah uh, we've been open for nine years actually but i'm not looking for like a compliment well, you know, it doesn't matter oh oh no no no, no. That's not, that's, that was not the goal but it's <clears throat> it is people like you and places like yours that like how could you not be amped as fuck all the time uh, about mm -hmm. places like that how yeah. what like how dare you not be excited <laughs> right with, with all of us right like all these yeah. all these great places you know and like uh, it's it, it really is like how do we convert these people to these people and these people to these people parking and when i when i yeah parking's a big one it <laughs> Come really on, Glenn. and and i and that's such a huge <laughs> but thing, i know man. we're getting like parking garage shit like it's coming it is happening but oh jesus dude no one wants to park in a parking garage and then, yeah but like there's nine now so like yeah, you can right. just park in whatever parking garage so, you want. It is good to my be whole thing like, is, I feel it. You go to Walmart and you have and they're busy and you have to park at the end of the lot. So you walk like a block to get into Walmart. And then inside of Walmart, you walk what six, eight blocks inside of Walmart. Like so well, all I'm asking is, is you for you to walk three blocks, maybe, to get into my restaurant. But do that's you one do thing. It? You do it, do you not? Yeah, exactly. And here's but the other thing. You do. Here's the other thing. I don't need highlands level traffic to make my shit work i Correct. need 10 percent of one restaurant that's it yeah three or four carloads a night you know like 20 40 people a night that's all i need that's all i need to to, to make vagabond a happy place it's yeah. not it's not that much it's not ridiculous to ask but people are so scared of the two blocks off the interstate to come down and see us but the, exactly what you said though you have to park like nine miles away at Walmart and they still go in and buy stupid shit. Right. Like right. candles when all they needed was bread. Come right. on, man. Right. I came for the bread. I stayed for the candles. 
<laughs> I mean, I, I'm a sucker for a good smelling candle. To well, who is it, right? <laughs> But no, I mean, I, our biggest problem in this this city and the state it, it is it's a marketing, it's a perception problem. It's it's something. <laughs> I think you're instrumental instrumental in helping us overcome, man. Like, you 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 put these put these pictures out of this food, whether it's for my place or anyone else, and you and people are like, oh shit, that's fucking national quality level food. Yes, it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Come and eat it. It's it is weird. Like I just like i you know i became like the logo guy and then the t-shirt guy and then the food photography guy but like i i love commercial photography like i'm i'm not really a people photographer i like products i i like food mm-hmm. and like the same thing i do with like east willing clay works like that shit was so much fun and working with adam and beth and them being yeah. ridiculously yeah. like as lighthearted as i was like uh, you go back to like our 420, like a wake and bake mug shoot with right? all, oh, I put amazing. all that, like there were like pizza pockets on that so thing, man. Good. And that's fun. And it also shows the reasoning why that product exists. Well, uh, absolutely. And I've learned a lot from them and from Nail City Records above, uh, up, upstairs from us at Vagabond, uh, John and, and Molly, and they, they ship out more records than they get foot traffic. You know, and oh, I, yeah, I know man. Adam and Beth ship out more pottery than they than they get foot yeah. traffic. And I didn't know that before I started there. They they were like, "Yeah, man, it's all over the U.S." I was yeah, like, What's yeah. I mean, and that's like what got me started. All the stuff. I was like, "Word." That's okay. what got me started thinking about the YouTube channel and like, how do I get food out to a larger yeah. audience? And it's it's through this medium of of video and like pictures and you know, photography and like getting people to see like okay, you're not here to taste this, but you can see how good this is. And like, don't you want to taste it? Like, don't you want to taste it enough to follow? Don't you want to taste it enough to be interested in what we're doing? Yeah, absolutely. And next, like your YouTube videos, you can start making meal kits and selling them. Like, hell yeah, who knows knows what will happen, man. I feel like that's a million dollar idea. Investors, possibly you. I'll I'll kick you back a (laughs) 0.05%. I'm in, doesn't matter. (laughs) Just feed me, dude. That's it. Well, you'll never go hungry as long as I have food, man. That's for sure. I love it. God damn. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> All day. All right, man. Well, we did it. We talked for a straight up hour. And this I feel like fun. we could I talk feel like for 10 minutes. Yeah, I feel like we could talk yeah. for a whole nother hour. The only problem is I got, I really got to pee. Uh, yeah, same, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good time. Um, thank you so much for being on. Um, I love you. You're my brother. I love you forever. I have feelings for you. It's okay. Let's admit it. Yeah, no, I'm totally comfortable with it. Um, (laughs) I really appreciate everything that you do for me, for our whole area, man. Like, truly, like, you should go to bed content and happy and knowing that you're making a positive impact on the world. And, like, that's, hi, kitty. That's really the best we can all have. That's clam, bro. I don't. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I just, I, I feel like. I just want to still make more of an impact. The more people I work with, uh, the better. Um, I said, I I meet new people almost every day. Yeah. It's, it's, it's getting to be a lot. And just the more, more businesses, uh, I can work with the absolute better. I mean, look, man, you're not stopping. I'm not stopping. Um, we'll, we'll have you back on here again at some point and we'll talk more about stuff. Like, yeah, man, you know, not, not, nothing is, uh, things are building, only building. And that's just how we're moving now, man. We don't mess around. Good deal. I appreciate you big time. Uh, this was super fun. Awesome. That's what I hope for, man. That's what I hope for. I hope everyone watching enjoyed and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, This was an awesome time and I appreciate you all. And uh, all right, we're going to end it. All right, boo. Love you forever.